Gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Hollingsworth, is now recognized for five minutes. Well, good afternoon. I'm excited to be here with each of you. Before I get started on my questions, Mr. Moynihan, I wanted to let you know, Saruthi, raise your hand, Saruthi. She has been my team member for a couple of years now, but on Monday, she becomes a Bank of America team member, about which she is very, very excited. So I hope you'll take good care of her and know and recognize the talent that she has shown already in our office. I'm sure she'll do the same at Bank of America. We will do that, and her father already works for us, so he'll oh, take care of it. You should have called us. <laughs> So that was a fun little scene. Representative uh, Trey Hollingsworth, a Republican, boasting about the fact that one of his aides, an aide who works for him, who in his capacity as a member of the House Financial Services Committee, is supposed to be, as you can see in that uh, B-roll, providing oversight of US banks, instead lining up job opportunities, following in the footsteps of her father in that case. And they thought it was hilarious. The other banks joking about, well, I, w I wanted to have one of your top aides work for me right now. And they just thought it was great. Uh, we got a perspective on uh, from someone else who is in the room because you might think, well, maybe that's selectively edited. You can see that people were adding graphics. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, said, I was in the room where this happened and it was just as gross and wild in person as it is here. People rightly discuss conflicts of interest of members of Congress. But lobbying of senior staff who move on behalf of members and committees is a huge part of the problem too. And we, I mean, we can't be surprised by this. Many lawmakers and aides involved in crafting and watering down Wall Street regulations in the wake of the last major economic collapse went on to take jobs at large financial institutions. Like this is this is how it works. And that's not surprising. It is a little bit jarring to see them so openly like laughing and basically slapping each other on the back about the process, though. Yeah, I think there's um, I think there's a clash of cultures here. And so uh, some speculated that since Trey Hollingsworth is uh, stepping down from office and is not running next time around that he, that he's more openly brazen like this. I actually don't think that that's the explanation. I think that. He probably is confounded by why people uh, are upset about this. Uh, he probably thinks, uh, "What? I was just being friendly. We can't be friendly anymore." Oh my God, these libs, you know, and they're so unbearable. It's just me and a banker having a great time and high fiving about our, you know, the staffer that we that we share in a sense, right? And and he doesn't. I guarantee you that he doesn't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, and and that's because. Again, I gotta. I'm sorry, but I gotta say it's mainstream media that says that bribery is okay. So the Hollingsworths of the world aren't like, oh my God, I take all this money from banks and I write bills that give them billions of dollars, and all my staffers go and get paid over there and get checks. You know, their salaries that are way, way more than they made here. But the press never called me out on it. Nobody ever said it was a bad thing. So he's probably like, oh, AAC, what a radical. Doesn't think we should take bribes from banks. It doesn't think that when we stop working here, we should take millions from them and stuff it into our pockets. I'm radical, right? So I think that's actually what's happening here. And yeah. look at how the bankers responded. I mean, they kind of, every nobody else mattered in that room but those two. It's very casual as if this is an everyday occurrence because it is a regular occurrence. And it is just a reminder of the systemic failures of the system that it is rigged, that it is legal to bribe politicians in the United States of America. And let's just go ahead and keep it all in the family, shall we? We were gonna do that anyway, because her dad works for us. So the classism, also race is involved in this too, and ethnicity, because my God, that would not happen. I mean, not that I want it to happen, but you know, it would not happen for a black person or Hispanic person. This is an elite club that we see going on here. And they had no qualms about having this particular conversation. So again, mm -hmm. when we fight back and push back and we talk about the system, this is yet another example. This is a, a receipt for, for us when we talk about these kinds of issues so that people won't think that we making this stuff up. We are not making this stuff up. The man didn't give a damn about what he was saying and, and, and the impact that this has, that the people right in the room, it's like the fox garden the hen house. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what happens in American politics. The fox guards the hen house. Yeah. yeah.
And then gets paid to do so from yes. the hens, I guess, or his stomach. I don't know. In the metaphor, I'm not really sure, but it's corrupt. I know that. Very much. Um, so. Sorry, Jenk. Yeah, I was just going to give a quote from Common Dreams. Uh, they explained the financial services industry deployed more than 1,400 former federal employees, including ex committee staffers, to lobby Congress on banking issues. And that's just recently. Public Citizen uh, is the one that uh, estimated that, okay? 1,400 former staffers and federal employees. You think that all those employees just happen to be great at banking? Mm -hmm. no, guys, seriously, think about it. 1,400 former federal employees, all employed by the banking industry. And they don't have any, and then they complain about Hunter Biden. Oh, he doesn't have any experience in Ukrainian gas. That's true, but these folks didn't have any experience in banking either. That's just yeah. a pipeline for bribery. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet those 1400, uh, knowing that theoretically big dollars could be made once they leave government, go into business, I bet they did their job focused on the needs of their constituents and the American people. And they did a really good job of providing oversight in all the banks. I bet it didn't affect them at all. Anyway, sorry, Nina, I cut you off there. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's just even making me think about something Mother Jones once said when she said she asked somebody why they were in prison or jail, and they said because they they stole some shoes. And she said, Well, had you stolen a railroad, you'd be a senator, you'd be a U.S. senator. <laughs> that is what is going on here. I understand, yeah. yeah. And it reminds me of a, a great former regulator who wrote a book: Best way to rob a bank is to run a bank. <laughs> 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 No truer words have ever been spoken. And guys, last thing, you see how they are all yucking it up. Oh, well, her father is also here. Oh, I didn't know that. You should have told us that earlier. We could have taken more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Completely yes. comfortable with that, Jane. It was like they were at a cafe somewhere just having a conversation, and we got a chance to peer in. Yeah. Look, it's one big, happy, corrupt club in Washington, and none of us are in it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.